Hey, this is Brent Arnold, and today we're going to put the app that we created using the mobile, the ActionScript mobile projects in uh, Flash Builder 4.5. We're now going to build this and deploy it to uh, the iPad. Now, the key here is you have already created, you have a iPhone developer account, you've already created the .p12 certificate, which I have a video that shows how to do that. You've already created a provisioning profile, and again, I have uh, a video that shows that and now we're ready to deploy we're going to build this app and we want to deploy it to the iPad now this applies to the iPhone as well so uh, right now we're targeting the iPad but the principles are the same so uh, the first thing we want to do is um, if I go ahead and I click uh, run it's going to um, bring up the dialog here, of course, because we haven't launched it yet. And it's going to ask, hey, do you want this to be on the desktop or on the device? So go ahead and select on the device. And now it says package settings have not yet been configured. Now, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and click configure. And what this does is it opens up the properties panel uh, and it says, hey, for Apple iOS, I need some information. Well, the information is going to be those two files that you've already created, right? Yes. Uh, let's see, ibrand cert.p12 and the provisioning profile is also on the desktop and this is the one I created. Again, if you don't have these, this isn't going to work. And here I'm using developer certificates and developer profiles. Uh, package contents, this is everything that's included. If you have um, other things you would drag them into the source folder and then you could either select whether you want them to be packaged or not. Uh, permissions, we don't have permissions for the iOS. We uh, rely on Steve Jobs to give us the permissions. Okay, uh, go ahead and click OK. Now notice how this uh, has changed and it's saying hey you'll need to manually install it. Alright, we'll do that. Go ahead and click Run. At this point uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Now, this is good. I knew this would happen because we need to set, notice what this is saying. Hey, the application does not match the pattern, blah, 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 blah. Well, what this means is that your provisioning profile says, I'm going to create an app using this app identifier. And for mine, I created com.tutorialsbyibrant.star. So that means that I can say com dot whatever I want. Well, I need to set that. So go ahead and click OK. And it's going to cancel the build. And go over here and let's open the app descriptor file. Let's go ahead and switch to source. And we'll, right here it says ID. This is where we need to change the value to represent the uh, app ID that we created. So com.tutorials by ibrint dot and then I went ahead and did simple multi-touch which is the name. Go ahead and save that. Go ahead and click run and it's going to go ahead and run that. Now uh, notice how it went farther now it's asking for the password so remember the password you created for your certificate and we want to check remember password for this session. The reason is that if we rebuild and post to our device, we want to uh, we don't want to have to enter the password every time. So we want it to remember it. So as long as Flash Builder is open, it will remember this password for this session. Okay, go ahead and click OK. Now it's building. Hey, it's doing something. Now it's got all sorts of stuff like you can read. Uh, the point is it does take a little time. It takes a little bit of time. Now while it's working, I'm going to uh, plug my new book. Oh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't have a book. Um, I don't know how to read, so how am I going to write a book? Uh, seriously though, let's talk about posting the app to the device, syncing it with the device. Now this can be a challenge. You have to use iTunes. And if you're on Windows, um, you can do this on Windows with using iTunes. But the problem is when you go to deploy an app and actually upload it to the App Store, currently you have to use a Mac and you have to use the uh, application loader 
app uh, program that comes with Xcode. All right, now look, it says, hey, it's been completed successfully. All right, now let's go ahead and reveal package because we want to know where this is. So it's going to open the folder. So there's the folder. I'm going to move this over here slightly so we can see some other things. Go ahead and click OK. Now this folder is still here. What I was talking about, on Windows, you have to use iTunes in order to get the app to the device. Um, actually, there are a couple of ways. I, I take that back. You don't have to use iTunes. You can actually use a web server. And the reason for that is, as of iOS 4, we have what we call over-the-air um, installation. So that means that you can post the app on your web server and then download it to your device. If you navigate to that website from your device and you click the link, you can download it and install it. So that's another way to get it onto the device. I'm not going to set that up right now. I want to show you another way. If you have a Mac and you happen to have Xcode installed, which you should because you're an iPhone developer and these there's a lot of tools you can use. And so I'm going to open Xcode. I just clicked it here. I'm not worried about this blah 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 uh, whoops Xcode okay I want window organizer now check out what we got here uh, it says add and delete so what notice how it says devices and this happens to be my device now it's plugged in now you can see over here if I uh, it's kind of lighting I've set it up so I could see this a little easier but the point is that I have my device and it's connected and it's recognized and then uh, under here I have the application now these are applications that I have installed on the device that I've developed right and this is stuff I'm doing from work blah 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 uh, go ahead and you can either click add or and I'm gonna move this over so I can click it but I'm gonna click and drag this IPA folder so Notice we have this IPA. This is the package. This is the file that Flash Builder created. So I'm going to click, drag it, and then guess what? Lo and behold, it gets added. Hey, it's added. Now, click over to the device. Notice here it says simple, and then it says debug. And the reason why it does it debug is it automatically names it for you, and it references that as debug because you don't want to be confused with the release build. So, now, let's watch what happens. I'm going to touch. Hey, hey, look at that. Release. Touch. Release. Hey, guess what? Touch. Oh, boy, those are giant circles, huh? I'm going to touch. Oh, look at that. And then I go touch. Hey, look at that. Whoa, I got five fingers on here. Yay. Look at that. Now, hopefully you're at this point and you're all well and good and everything's working great and it's awesome. Right? Isn't it awesome? Look, I can touch five fingers. Wait, if I can reach around the camera. Oh, wait, look, look. I got 10 fingers, see? So for each touch point, let's review the code. For each, every time you touch, I call it get circle, and it's going to create a circle. And I have a random color and it adds it to that touch point and I'm doing the start touch drag and it follows it. Now, someone over there is going, Brent, why is it so slow? Why is it so laggy? Why is it so laggy when you move? All right, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the app and I'm gonna click over here to Flash Builder. I wanna do one thing here. Notice that I'm still in my app XML file Go ahead and scroll down. First of all, you'll want to change this version number. Go ahead and set that to one. And then this is the display name. This is what shows up uh, under the app icon. And now this is content. This is That's where that name comes in. Okay, scroll down here. And, okay, notice there's a couple things. One, we have this auto orients. And I set it to false, remember? But I also set full screen to true and visible true. Now, this one, notice here, I'm going to uncomment this tag. And this is the render mode tag. And notice it says either auto, CPU, or GPU. 
default is auto. So I want to set this to GPU. And the reason for that is when it creates the uh, graphics, I want it to be cached so that when I move, that it uh, moves and responds better. So go ahead and save this. And when we do GPU mode, the other thing you want to consider and click over to the project, we want to set two values for this object so that when um, it gets created, we want it to be cached and we want it to um, also be treated as a bitmap. And I won't go into all the details, but basically the GPU will take pre-rendered graphics or bitmaps and can do wonderful things with them and can you can manipulate and move the bitmaps much faster uh, than you would dynamically drawn vectors. So right now we're creating a circle and this is we're actually drawing this and it's a vector object. Well we don't need this to be uh, such a uh, vector we want to treat it as a bitmap so in order to do that we want to say hey once I get this spot let's call cache as bitmap and set it to true so that means hey I want this object to be cached and treated as a bitmap and the reason you do that is so that when you have GPU mode enabled it will cache the object to uh, the there's a whole bunch of low-level stuff and I I'll we'll cover that some other time but basically cache as bitmap means I want you to treat this vector object as a bitmap object and you only do that if you've created a vector now if you have and if you've imported bitmaps they will already be treated as bitmaps unless um, you manipulate the data and you you know you, you just want to set it for cache as bitmap the other thing we want to do is we want to set uh, what we call the bitmap matrix. Now, the matrix is again, these are really advanced ActionScript things, and there's a whole set of math involved, and I don't know everything. Um, I'll pretend, but I, I don't know everything. All I know is we want to set this to a matrix object and I just press control space and I want it to just set it to a matrix objects and it's just a, a an empty null object but the point is is that it sets it up so that ActionScript has this object that it can manipulate and it can cache it better now you will be amazed at how well this sets up so we've got this we've made these two changes you have had caches bitmap caches bitmap matrix and you set render mode to GPU now let's go ahead and build this and test it out. Um, before we build it, at, well, you can do this whenever. I want to delete this one. And down here, I realize it's off screen. It says delete. So I've selected it. Let's go ahead and delete that because I want to replace it. And eh, you always want to just make sure you got the latest stuff. So uh, just, you know, keep that in mind. All right, so I want to build this again and it launches and it says this will take several minutes now um, you know it's it'll take a few minutes don't worry it's working um, larger projects can take a while and they can also run out of memory if you have a large uh, you know project with multiple action script libraries and there's a lot of compiling going on um, remember this is converting the action script to uh, bytecode to ARM bytecode that runs on the device and so it's using this low-level virtual machine thing I don't know much about it I'm just gonna talk until this thing finishes but the point is that uh, the larger the project then the more memory it will take and you if you're not careful it'll run out of memory and you'll get a Java uh, error and so the way to work around that is you have to set the Java memory okay so this just tells you how to use it with iTunes but we those of us on a Mac we got it man we got it so go ahead and click reveal and it's the same thing 
and I want to go ahead and click over here and click over here and I want to click and drag and it's going to load it up there it goes now <clears throat> back over to the device notice we have our debug so I'm going to hit start it and we have our white screen now check this out I want to touch it Ooh, hey that's a lot better look at that that response is a lot better rewind the video and you'll see how how much better that is look at that isn't that cool look at those look at all those touch points that is sweet Woohoo! all right very simple but powerful stuff right so that was the multi-touch API and how to build an ActionScript mobile project for iOS. So hopefully uh, this gives you some things to uh, consider and we added a little optimization and you're going to run off and create the next awesome, cool, super million dollar app and then you're going to remember me because I taught you how to do it and you know, you can always be nice. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.